Hi, my name is Tina, and this is Knitting Blooms. In this episode, there is some catch-up chatter at the beginning, and then I talk briefly about the progress of my whips, and I share loads of finished objects. I also talk about my favorite knitting chair, as well as my yarn storage cabinets. There is also a bit of discussion about a design I am starting to work on, and a mystery cow that will be starting late summer or early fall. We have a drawing for the last Wool and Testament read-along, and I remind everybody about our current read-along for Dying Wishes. Check out the credits at the end of the show to find out how you can get in touch with me. I really enjoy hearing from each and every one of you, so don't hesitate to contact me if you have a question or comment. Hi everybody, thanks so much for joining me. As always, I am happy that you have decided to spend your time with me. I know how many podcasts are out there, and I also know how many new podcasts are coming up. I have kind of gotten back into a little bit of watching podcasts. Um, not as crazy as I was before. Um, I think I've watched maybe two podcasts this week or three podcasts. You know, just randomly, um, you know, one morning I was having breakfast and I turned on uh, Knitting in Circles. Another day I was just kind of, I don't know, I think it was over the weekend, I was just doing some stuff over you know, around the house, and I flipped on uh, single-handed knits. So, I have been watching a couple podcasts. I did not go back and try and catch up from where I was. There's just no possible way that's going to ever happen. I, And some of them, I went ahead and I just deleted them off my feed. Not deleted the podcast, but deleted the episodes. And others I left on there in hopes that maybe at some point I will go back and watch them. Not sure if that will happen, but we'll see how it goes. Anyway, uh, this episode is probably going to be shorter. Um, I, I'll say that and then it will end up being longer. But anyway, <laughs> I have a few things to show you. Um, actually, I have some finished objects. I don't have any of my whips here and I was planning on bringing over my spinning. I have been working on my Into the World fiber that I've been working on for a while but it's not done yet and um, you can't really see much on the bobbin anyway. So hopefully I will get that done in the next week or so. I did a lot of spinning this weekend trying to just get it done. I think I got about a third done over the weekend, a third of a braid. And that's quite a bit considering how long it's been sitting. Anyway, let's see what we have today. The last few weeks have been kind of crazy, busy at work. Um, we're still having really busy time because of this weather, this winter that we had. And, um, there's only three of us in the office, so it's been very busy uh, every single day. I think for the last two weeks, I have not been able, had any time whatsoever to do any knitting at work. Um, I've kind of come to the realization that that might be the normal from now on. Um, occasionally in the afternoon, I have a little bit of spare time, but it's not really enough to uh, pull out the knitting at all. Um, you, because usually things come up, you know, I'll be, I'll have a free minute or two and then all of a sudden I'll get a phone call. I've got Cody over here. I've got hair flying everywhere now because I'm petting him on the side. Um, so yeah, so I haven't had much time to do any knitting at work, uh, but I have been trying to do a bit of knitting after work. However, there have been days that by the time I get home, you know, I don't work late or anything like that. It's not like I'm having to work extra hours or anything. But by the time I get home, I just want to chill. I just want to relax. I don't want to do anything. You know, there one day earlier this week, I actually got home and I was planning on getting on the computer. I've seen everybody um, doing that code on the computer on the computer to get their Ravelry number. I still haven't had a chance to do that. No, it's crazy. It takes two seconds to do. 
and I haven't had a chance to do it because I've just been so busy at work and by the time I get home it's like I don't even want to turn the computer on anyway so this week has been crazy um last week I got cat hair in my mouth now um I was playing a bit of sims in my free time so not a whole lot of knitting got done last week but I do have a number of finished objects to show you today uh, I did want to mention uh, that our floors in our bedroom are still not done. <laughs> the last time I recorded, I I put off doing a VKN until after until the next couple weeks because I thought we would be spending time putting the floors in. And then, like the next day, I found that Home Depot is having a workshop for installing hardwood floors on June 14th. So we decided to go ahead and sign up for that workshop because neither Steve nor I have ever done hardwood floors. We've never installed hardwood floors before. And I thought it would be a good exercise to do that because we might learn things that we don't know and it might take out some of the frustration of doing the floors. So we have registered for that workshop and that means that the floors will not get done until the end of June, early July. I know, it's crazy. They've been in my living room now for a month and it'll be another month before they get moved. <laughs> it's crazy. But It'll be done soon. The other thing that I wanted to mention that I have kind of been procrastinating on, and I do apologize, is a few months ago, I had told everybody who, in fact, I had contacted everybody via email and said anybody who had made a donation to the podcast in the last two years of, um, I think it was 750 or more, I was going to create a DVD for them and and send it to them. I've started doing that. I have a couple of DVDs complete, but I still have not gotten the labels to print because I would like to make some nice labels um, with the Knitting Blooms logo and that sort of thing. So I want to get some labels that I can print on the printer and put the logo on there and what have you. And that has been my holdup so far. I've kind of picked out what I want, but I... I think I want to go to the store and look um, just to be sure that I get exactly what I want. But that is moving forward. I just want to let you know if you have contacted me and you've told me the episodes that you want on a DVD, I do have that information. I have not lost it. Um, and you will eventually get your CD. I just, I've just been procrastinating, like I said. I think I announced it just before Knittopia, and then Knittopia, and everything with the cats, and whatnot, and then when I got back, I just feel like I've been in a whirlwind since the beginning of the year. And even though there have been weeks that I have kind of just vegged and not really done much of anything, I've really needed that time. So, I don't I feel bad about not getting it out to you guys sooner but I also know that for my sanity <laughs> I just haven't been able to do it sooner than that so anyway should we get on to the knitting this week as I mentioned I have several finished objects but before I get into my finished objects I just want to kind of give you a rundown of my whips Last week, or two weeks ago when I recorded, I showed you my um, my little big shrug that I had blocked, finished blocked, and was ready to seam up, and had to rip it out and, and do some more increases. I did get those increases um, done, and I re-blocked it yesterday, and I took it off the blocking board this morning. It was all dry. And I haven't seamed it up yet. I do not have it here to show you because it's just one long piece of knitting. I will show you that next time because I'm sure that it will be complete by then. 
And the other project is, um, well, this is weird. I started to do my notes and then I realized I was in my, the wrong, the wrong note, um, the wrong episode screen. So I've, I've lost all my notes that I had created, put in here from, from this past week. So, and I'm looking down and I have two of the same project in here. Anyway, the second project that I have been giving some love to this week is my N Nantucket Red. I have made a, not really a significant progress, but a good few inches on the back. Um, again, I don't have that here to show you because there's nothing um, revolutionary about it uh, and no uh, interesting facts that came came up this week. So, But I did want to give you an update on those two projects. Those are the two projects, other than the finished objects that I'm going to show you, that I've worked on in the last couple weeks. And if you saw the tutorial from last week, you might already know what the finished objects are going to be. I have some charity hats finished. I have one little preemie hat. I have two little preemie hats. I have one child hat. I have another hat and another hat <laughs> and another hat and another hat and another hat <laughs> and another hat uh, another hat <laughs> another one and another one <laughs> all of them that is how easy this hat is. I've pretty much, at first when I did these, I started these a couple weeks ago uh, when I recorded the um, tutorial for the hats. And my plan was to, I think I did like three hats in one afternoon. Uh, I think I did four hats in like a two hour period, two and a half hour period. Um, and that was like on a Sunday or maybe it was a Saturday. And then on Sunday I did a couple more hats and I thought, you know what? I don't want to keep doing the hats, you know, just keep cranking them out because I thought I would get burnout and I thought, you know, I need to work on my other projects. I want to work on my other hand knitting projects. So my thought was I would come home from work each night and... Uh, and and whip one out you know I could come home and I could just whip it out real quick well I did that a couple of days and then one day it just I wasn't feeling well so I didn't do it and then a couple more days went by and needless to say I didn't get as many hats done as I wanted to get done but I still have a boatload of yarn <laughs> to make them I have a whole box I don't, the box is over here um, a whole box of yarn that I want to make hats with, and then some that's still in my cabinet. So, tons of hats. I just love this pattern. Um, in the video that I that I did uh, for the tutorial, <clears throat> I mentioned that I learned this pattern from um, Teresa, who is mom of four. And you know we were I was talking about um, doing hats and stuff like that, and she had posted I think she had posted um, some of her hats on um, the finished object thread or something. I can't remember what it was we were um, it was in some one of the threads. and I saw her hat and I'm like, oh, that looks like a very interesting hat. And I saw this section down here and I thought, oh well, she, is that ribbing? I couldn't really see the picture because uh, her hats were a dark, a dark color, so I couldn't really tell from the picture. And um, I asked her how she did her hats. And I thought, okay, that sounds kind of interesting. So I tried it, and it was so quick and so simple. And like I said, if you've seen the video, 
I pretty much ran the video and just fast forwarded some of the sections where I was um, actually doing the different rows, but pretty much let you see the entire process of doing the hat. And it was so simple and quick. And as you can see, all of these different hats. Now, um, a couple weeks ago when I talked about my um, my stash enhancements and I said I bought some yarn from Hirschner's and um, a couple people said, I'd really like to see that yarn. Well, here, you're seeing it now. <laughs> these are some of the uh, Deborah Norville everyday um, yarns that I got from Hirschner's. These, and these are like self-striping. It's kind of, kind of cool. This one and this one and this one. And this one is also Deborah Norville. This bright, bright pink was going to be my um, my uh, log cabin blanket, but I found a different pink that I like better. And then you have this mint and just a chocolate brown. Here's another one of the self-striping. And here's another one of the self-striping. And then I just, th these were just leftover from this. Um, this actually, the green one on the top was left over from this too. So I just did use the leftover. And this was one of the ones that I had gotten from Webbs. This was um, Plymouth Encore. And I have a number of um, more skeins of this too. Now this I used on the same tension as I did for the Deborah Norville. Uh, but this is not as thick of a yarn as this. And I could, this the tension I used, I think it was eight on my machine. Um, the tension was perfect for this one, but this one is, is kind of airy. And um, the next time I make a hat with this yarn, I think I'm gonna drop the tension down a bit and uh, add more stitches because I just, I know that this wouldn't be a, a, an extremely warm hat. When I do hats for Steve, Steve's bald, so he needs lots of, lots of um, thick, thick hats, which is why he likes the, the double layer, because this is a double layer here over his ears. Um, but I don't think this hat would be very, very warm for him because it's, it's quite airy. But I got lots of hats done, and I'm hoping to get a lot more done because they are doing a hat drive at the Zombie Knitpocalypse, and I'm planning on bringing all of these hats to Zombie Knitpocalypse. And I might even save a few hats out for um, for Halos of Hope as well. I'm sure I can get a lot more hats completed in the next three weeks before I leave for the retreat. So those are the finished objects. That's really the only finished object. That's all the knitting I'm showing you this week. But I did want to tell you about my shawl. Um, this is actually um, a mystery shawl that I did a few, years, a few years back. It's called Fantasia. You can find it on my projects page. And as I'm wearing this shawl today, I am remembering how much I like the shape of this shawl. It's more of a crescent. It's a, it's got really long, it's got really long wings on it. And it's more of a crescent. And it kind of inspired me to start working on a new design. I'm not a fast designer, so I'm thinking that possibly by fall, I might be able to have a, another mystery knit along for you guys. Um, I started working, I'm, I started working on the design. I kind of, I know the shape of the shawl that I want to do. And I have a kind of a jumping off point with a pattern, with a stitch pattern that I want to use. And um, I just need to work out the details, how I want it to morph into different parts of the shawl. And as soon as I can get something down on paper, I will start knitting it and then also ask for some test knitters to help me out uh, to do some um, just to make sure the pattern is readable before I do the mystery knit along. And it will probably be in the fall, not before the fall. Um, probably at the very earliest it will be September, but maybe even October. 
we'll just have to see how it goes. It depends on how quickly I can get it designed and how busy I am and how much time I put into it because when I design, I get really in in depth and grossed into doing it and I'll work on it for a few hours a day and then I kind of get a little bur burned out. So I'm trying to limit my time that I work on it more of, um, you know, an hour a day, you know, kind of work through some some different ideas with the pattern, with the stitch pattern, and then let it kind of smolder a bit, you know, in the back of my mind and, and grow and um, that sort of thing. So I'm hoping that that technique of designing will help move me along rather than to really push, 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 and then get exhausted by, you know, having to try and push this out very quickly. So that's my plan for the near future. So I'm going to kind of answer a question that gets asked of me quite often. And it's in regards to uh, my bookcases as well as my chair. And we'll start with the bookcases. Both items are items from Ikea. And I've had the chair, actually let's start with the chair. <laughs> I've had the chair for a number of years. And originally I had one chair. And every time I would have knit club at my house, everyone wanted to sit in the chair. So then I ended up getting two more chairs for, you know, for the house. And then still, every time um, I had knit club, you know, that the chair was always wanting to be um, used. I always took the second one because I liked the chair. It's, it's a very comfortable chair to sit in for hours of knitting. And it is the Pong chair. I think it's pronounced Pong. It's P-O-A-N-G. And again, it's from Ikea. And you buy the, the frame of the chair and then you buy the cushion of the chair. And they have different levels of um, expensive cushions. They have the cheap ones, which is what I have because my original thought was I'm going to make a really nice cushion or a seat cover to go with, on my chair um, to match my basement. Never done that. I've never... <laughs> I've never tried. <laughs> but that was my original thought, which is why I went with the cheap cushion because I didn't think I needed anything elaborate. And you can also get the hassock or the ottoman that goes with it, which I also like, but now have converted it to the, um, the storage ottomans because then I can keep my knitting in my storage ottoman. And I do take my chair with me to Knittopia. Uh, I do not take it with me to other retreats because it is quite bulky and you have to take it apart in order to get it in my car. But, um, Knittopia is 12 days and I need a nice comfortable seat to sit in for 12 days. So um, it is very nice to sit in for 12 days of knitting. My bookcases are also from Ikea. They are the Billy bookcases with the glass doors. Now, I've also asked, been asked to, to, um, to tell you guys how I organize my stash and when I ever get around to doing my close-up and personal um, look at my stash from inside my cabinets. I will go through how each shelf is organized and what's on the shelves and why I put them there and whatnot um, one of these days. <laughs> but I do have extra shelves. I think it comes with two... I think I think it comes with four shelves each bookcase there's two bookcases here and I think each bookcase comes with four shelves and I got an additional two shelves for each bookcase yeah I'm pretty sure I think so <laughs> I don't remember I know I got extra shelves because I didn't want these huge um, shelves because I, I knew I was going to have a lot of different types of yarn that I wanted to organize. 
and I believe that including the doors and the extra shelves, both bookcases came to around $450. Might have been a little bit more, it might have been a little bit less. So very reasonably priced for bookcases with the glass doors. And the glass doors, in my case, with the cats, definitely a must. Before I got the bookcases, all of my yarn were stored in plastic bins and they were stacked up to the ceiling and if I wanted something that was in the bottom bin I had to take all the top bins off to get to the bottom bin. It was a pain to do that. I was so frustrated with it and when I got um, my cabinets and was able to put all of my yarn in there and just simply open the door and pull out what I want, it was heaven <laughs> and it still is heaven and um, I just I really love my bookcases if you have a um, good size stash that you want to be able to look at easily or access easily I highly recommend these bookcases even if you use half of it for your yarn and the other half for your knitting books or your other knitting accessories it's perfect. It's a perfect thing. I mean, I think I don't do the math. I mean, if it's 450 for two, then the math for do the math for one if, if you only need one. But um, I probably would have gotten three if I had the room for three, but I just don't have the room for three. And honestly, if I had three, I would probably fill up three and we don't need to go there. In fact, um, one thing I wanted to mention this time is that there probably won't be any new stash enhancement for a while. <laughs> I am so smashed full in these cabinets. I do not think there is one space for any new yarn. And I still have all the stash enhancement that I showed you last time I recorded to somehow fit in the cabinets. And I still have the whole box of charity knitting yarn here and I have another box of my yarn for my log cabin blanket when I finally do that. And there's more yarn, miscellaneous skeins that I will probably end up using for charity knitting over in my scrapbooking area. Honestly, I have no business buying any yarn. Now, I know when I go to Zombie Knit Apocalypse, there probably will be yarn purchases. I just have to keep them to a minimum. It's just going to be crazy. I have, I'm going to have to do something. <laughs> I'm going to have to knit faster, but if I don't have time to knit, how is that going to work? So, yeah. Stuffed cram packed full cabinets. So we started a new read along this week. This go round we are reading Dying Wishes and today um, June, May, <laughs> May 29th is the first day that we are discussing the first six chapters. So if you are interested in joining along with our read along then please go over and check out the thread in the group. Um, I have a whole list of when we're discussing each chat, each set of chapters and whatnot. Uh, but we did finish a read along a while ago and I did draw for a winner. And the winner was, this is from the read along chatter, and the winner was number four, Angel Mom 3, and that's Sandy. So congratulations, Sandy. Did I say number four? It's number four. Um, but anyway, congratulations, Sandy. You are the winner of this uh, read-along. So please get in contact with me and let me know which book-related website you would like to have your $10 gift certificate, and I will send that right out to you. And um, yeah, so congratulations on that. And we are, like I said, we've already started the new read-along, so jump on in and join us on that. We still have the Knit Your Stash 
uh, challenge going on. Again, this is going to go on through the end of the year. And the only requirement is that you complete the um, you complete the uh, finished object from April 1st to December 31st. And the yarn had to have been posted in Ravelry prior to April 1st, 2014. That's the only requirement. It can be anything else, uh, any object, any pattern, you know, what have you. As long as the yarn was entered into Ravelry before April 1st, 2014, and you finished the project after April 1st, 2014. Um, I'm not doing a drawing for the Knit Your Stash Challenge this week, but I will do a drawing for both the finished object and the chatter thread next time uh, when I record. And I think that's all I have for you this week. I hope you enjoyed the show, and I hope you have a fabulous week, and I hope your knitting blooms. Talk to you later. Bye.